here we go. We are being recorded. Thank you. Great. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 401 and I'm going to call out everybody's name. So you can say we're here. Uh, Anika? Here. Alex, known as Xander? Here. And Austin? Here. Great. Good. Okay. Um, so uh, where did my agenda go? I had an agenda up and it disappeared on me. Um, also, let me get it in front of me again. Okay, there we go. Um, so the first order of business is approval of the minutes of March 8th. Uh, if somebody wants to make a motion. Move to approve the minutes from March 8th. Great. That's second from someone. Second. Great. Um, does anyone have any comments uh, on the, the minutes? Okay, seeing none. Um, go ahead and move to vote. Anika? Yes. Uh, Alex? Yes. And Austin? Yes. And Alex uh, is an aye, so that's a unanimous vote of the meeting minutes. Um, next section of the agenda. Um, so since uh, three out of the four people on this committee were not around for the first uh, 2016 push around the feasibility, I thought it might be helpful to see some of the pages upon pages of <laughs> comments from uh, the community that we received. Um, and just talk a little bit um, about sort of framework about community outreach um, and sort of how we want to structure this going forward since it's a slightly different thing than we're doing now than what we did then. Um, so um, I sent you, I think some of the results of the surveys, also some of the results of the focus groups, some of the results of the interviews, but there were also patron group tours. There were individual tours with you know, disability access advisory committee team that there was a middle school group at the elementary school. And so there's, Sort of a lot of different ways that that community outreach was done in the past so we had the surveys uh patron groups um the tours interviews public forums and then there were actually uh, comment boards that were throughout the library and i think i sent you those as well um so again that was just kind of to get the three of us up to speed if anyone hadn't had a chance to look through that and have a sense of it and to help us sort of think about what we might want to do um, in the future in terms of community outreach so I'm just gonna open it up if anyone has any questions, comments, thoughts about that. Well, thank you for doing that. That was really helpful to see what had been done, um, you know, and especially the amount of, of responses that had come through for, for the survey. So it's like we can tell you know in terms of moving forward, um, what has been done and, and to reintroduce. And I think this would also be you know, helpful for community members that weren't around at that time or paying as close attention as well. So thank you for that. Welcome. Anybody else? And I, I wanna comment one of the things that was helpful, at least from the survey. And again, the survey was, I mean, it was 910 people who responded, which was a great survey response, but certainly not everybody we got feedback from, but to your comment, Anika, previously about who's our target audience, you know, I did note that, you know, 95% of the people who answered that survey were English as a primary language, they were 30 and above, 66% are masters plus, 42% were at the highest income bracket, and 49% were already weekly users of the library. So I don't think it tells us anything we probably didn't already know, but it sort of reconfirms that these are target groups. Go ahead, Anika. I'm sorry, did you say, what percent did you say were already uh, library users? 49, well, 40, they were all predominantly library users, but 49% already use the library on a weekly basis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I just thought that was an interesting, and, and again, this wasn't the only thing that was done, but it, it's sort of the easiest one where we could look at who, who we got information from. So. There's a lot of opportunity no, around that Those are after COVID, um, you know, where you have, I think, a lot of people like moving on to looking at libraries that hadn't, you know, maybe been regular users or visitors as really a space for, you know, information and, you know, does as, as many people that have had to transition um, professionally throughout 
COVID to really be able to see the, the library as a greater resource. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think people are probably gonna be looking at the library closer to probably the way librarians have been looking at libraries for the last 10 years, just the rest of us catching up to it. Um, so the other thing that I put in there um, in the meeting packet was um, the building program. Um, and Angela, I don't know if you can put that up, if that's helpful. So while Angela's pulling that up, um, the reason I put the building program in, so we had a conversation last time about, you know, sort of what we can and can't change. And we're waiting for um, the OPM to give us more details about that. And it's not to say that there aren't things that we don't already know, there are things we do already know, but, um, and so I thought it might be helpful to sort of take a quick look at the building program. So really high level, um, you know, the things that, aren't going to change. And these have been consistent in terms of talking to the public throughout this process is, um, you know, the size of the building in terms of square footage, we're roughly around 63,000 square feet. The location of the building, um, it's going to be in our existing building. Um, the building program uh, is another piece that's not gonna change. And then the last is also understanding um, that the building has a historic preservation restriction on it which is going to somewhat tie what we can do around the 1928 portion of the building. So anything we do to the 1928 portion of the building is going to be, um, is going to be with sort of the, the, the fence of the historic preservation restriction, but also that um, historic tax consultant because we're seeking state tax credits. So that's going to inform the conversations that we have with the public. So I thought it might be helpful for this group. So these are, high level um, what's up on the screen now, the building program. And building program is just a fancy word for what do we offer in the building? Um, what's the, what are the programming and services? And so this shows on the left, the existing square footage and then uh, what we're moving toward. And what you can see is, you know, adult circulation is increasing significantly. Youth and children, we're actually gonna have a teen space, special collections, ESL is pretty significant. Uh, shrinking administration, uh, staff's about the same, and then facilities, that's, you know, where your HVAC systems and things go. Um, and then the pages that follow are just the breakdown of the specifics of those. So um, those are, you can just see at the bottom. So the total adult circulation is the number that was on that front page, that 5,500 to 81. Um, and so those are how they break down. And so I thought that might be helpful for the group because I think one of the, first things that we can talk to the community about is within those spaces. So we know we're going to have a teen space where we really don't have one now, but what do today's teens um, want in that space? You know, what do they see in their own space? And so that seems, and again, I'm not talking where it's located in the building, I'm not talking what the square footage is, but simply what does that space look like to you? And I, and I think that's even two conversations. One is, you know, what color are the walls and, and the floors? And the other is what do you want in that space? I'm gonna stop babbling and see if anyone has any thoughts or questions about what I'm thinking in terms of frameworks to start with. Yeah, Anika. So again, um, this is, is helpful and I'm sure if we have uh, community members joining, it is, and it's, it's really exciting also to, to see um, how the spaces, like how they're like for children and young adults. I mean, that's, um, that's really, that's fantastic. But I had a question and forgive me if this was um, listed with an outreach, but was there a teaming before in terms of community outreach with Angela, um, Jennifer Moyston and Brianna from the, the town hall? So the first go round is they, we, Excuse me. My the original comments I have are all related to town meeting because we didn't have a charter when it started. Um, so those community um, outreach positions uh, are on the relatively new side, and I would say, Angela, have they been in existence? I mean, since COVID started, it's been. <laughs> so it's written into the charter. So since 2018. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think we're probably uh, the initial, um, all of the materials I provided were sort of that 2015, 2016 window when we were doing the community outreach for the schematic design and the feasibility. And so th none of those existed, but I think absolutely moving forward, we would definitely want to take advantage of. So that's a good thing actually that they yeah. were not included because this would be another resource and, you know, in terms of like reaching out to uh, different parts of the community. Yeah, and Austin can speak better to this, but I think Austin didn't, I think the library used an independent, uh, somebody to do the survey. I think that was like independently done if I'm not, like so somebody came in. The survey was done as part of the strategic planning um, process for the, um, for the library. There are other parts of the outreach which we should just note and remind ourselves about. One is that the, um, talking about independent facilitators, the town organized a set of conversations, if you, one might remember, uh, where they brought in facilitators and people were invited, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, maybe Angela or, 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 or and the rest of you do, to several of these occasions. Uh, and so that was, uh, that was also done and we used a facilitator there. Um, Alex, may I just raise a question while I'm, while I'm here? So yeah. on the, um, on the non-changeables, uh, the library, both to town council and to the library, both to town council and to the um, public made commitments about sustainability, uh, which aren't shown in particular in the program design. And I would take it that people came and said, well, we wanna make the library less sustainable. Can't imagine that exactly, but uh, that would be another one of the things that we would say is, is not, not changeable in its basic commitment. Is that right? Yeah, I was actually putting that into a, a separate bucket and maybe I shouldn't be. Um, Alex, last time, had sort of commented about the community expressing values through this process. Um, and so I was sort of putting, and again, that's because I don't know what I'm doing. So please feel free to have me put these in different buckets was sort of the, the fixed things of being, you know, the, the, um, the building, the square footage, the programming, and then the community values that were expressed. So that, the, that it be welcoming and accessible that it be sustainable and historic preservation. And those were sort of the three things, the overarching things that we heard from the community in terms of expressed values. And I guess, so that can be part of the same not changeable piece. I, May I just say, I think that's very helpful. The thing that I think we need to think about was what were the commitments that the library made to the town council and to the public. I think you've gotten mostly, but I think we want to just keep those in mind as things that um, we might not want to, we might not want to reverse those commitments. What we're, we're trying to do is to engage people in helping us flesh those commitments out and make sure they work for various communities in town. Yeah, Alex. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think that that's all really helpful to think about. I would also, uh, in the spirit of yes, ending that, add on the, as you pointed out, Alex, that survey is representative of a population which is already at the top of the bracket um, or socioeconomic bracket. Uh, overly educated, or I don't want to say overly educated, but uh, highly educated versus maybe other parts of the population. Um, and so how do we also honor the people who are not in that, right? Like, uh, I guess the question I would have is, do we want the future Jones Library to service the same people as the current Jones Library? And that question I think will really help guide, um, are we looking to expand 
the population that it is supporting because if that is our goal then i think we have to figure out how do we bring the participation rate more in line with maybe the town population than the current survey statistical population. Thanks. Okay. So I, the things we're gonna, so again, I'm looking at sort of buckets around this. So one is the community values, um, because I think ultimately one, I think, you know, Alex, you had said in the past, um, you know, how how I define a welcoming, accessible building is probably pretty different than somebody who, um, you know, has, uh, you know, is on the spectrum or who is blind or who is, you know, whatever, fill in the blank um, of whatever it is that's different than, you know, me. Um, and so having the community define what that welcoming, accessible means, as well as the sustainability and the historic preservation, because, you know, one person's idea of historic preservation is keeping all the woodwork and somebody else's idea is going back to wood floors. And again, much of that will be dictated, especially when it comes to sustainability and historic preservation, much of it's gonna be dictated by um, the HPR and the tax consultants. So I, I don't know what that conversation with community looks like, but I anticipate difficult decisions ahead of us. Uh, and by us, I mean the, the, the larger design and Jones Library Building Committee, because we're going to have to make choices uh, about, you know, do, do we do this thing that's gonna make the building even more sustainable or do we do it that's gonna be, you know, where, where, we, where we the trustees agreed to, I'm sure we could go even further, right? Or, and, and so I think there's gonna be have to be some understanding of, uh, community values around the priorities that may be at play, which doesn't mean they go away. It doesn't mean they're still not a priority. It just means when we have to make difficult choices, we have a sense of community priorities. Does that make sense? Anika. Yeah. Sorry. I'm doing a lot of talking and I don't want to be. <laughs> oh God, no, no. Um, I think, you know, just in listening to both um, Alex and uh, I'm sorry, Xander, and Austin, you know, I, I think, you know, just c connecting the dots because, um, you know, in terms of the audience, like, do we want to serve the population that is currently with the library? Yes. Do we want to expand? Yes. You know, um, just even quite literally, the library is going to be bigger. You know, it will, it will fit more and, and not just um, programs or people, right? So, and I'm also thinking if we focus on our controllables, like they're, there are, you know, we know what we can't control. We know what is set in stone. We know what, you know, and leaving room for things that could change that we do not see coming. Um, but focusing on like, okay, that's still information that we can convey to the public. And then also in terms of outreach um, and our, our target audience being who we do not have and who we're seeking. And, you know, so these would be, you know, various forms of people realizing that, you know, we do have, because this is the original studies were some time ago, there are advancements in technology uh, and just in other avenues that we do have, you know, to reach people. And so you would have both, you know, Xander and I, we wouldn't have been around, um, you know, for these studies at this time. So it is important, you know, for us to know what has happened. So we're not reinventing the wheel, but like oiling it and changing the wheels, you know? <laughs> making sure we have more efficient wheels and you know so I, I think all of this is is helpful as we realize like where where there is the flexibility to again make sure that when we're communicating we're as clear as we can be about what we're already committed to what is already happening where is there room where is there not room so we can really focus on where those opportunities are and you know, for a community that wants to hear, okay, this is, I, I'm here to know where's the progress, what's going on, there, there you go. For the community that's really interested, I want to know where I can have input and, and make change, whatever that is, I want to be involved, we're engaging them appropriately as well. Okay. Um, so I think four and five are kind of seem to be sort of agenda items that are sort of doing at the same time. Um, 
So I believe um, the schematic design phase, which is theoretically what we're in, is somewhere between eight, let's say eight weeks maybe. Um, and when we get to the end of that, right, we're confirming the programming, we're confirming the sustainability goals, like we're giving the architects sort of the, the go ahead to really start to like finish up where things go and what some of the details are. So I, I mean, absent us getting a timeline from the OPM, I'm just trying to give us a rough sense of things so we can start figuring out when we need to start doing things and what we wanna do first. I know that Austin had suggested sort of a first meeting being getting out to the community and talking about what is the JLBC? Who are they? What are we doing? What's this outreach subcommittee giving a lay of the land? People have thoughts around that being a first meeting and when and how and what that might look like. And what do we need to be able, what do we need to have information wise for that to happen that we may not have yet? Do you have your hands in? Yeah, it's still, sorry. I've also got a dog that's like trying to sit in my lap. And so oh. like, it's, I apologize for moving the camera around. Um, the thing, so I think going into that meeting, I really appreciate all the work that went into uh, the preparation for today and being able to show what we, at least what we do know at this point. Um, I think, uh, continuing to flesh that out into something that is easily digestible as well as something that community members can leave having put some input on. Um, where like, I personally would like to see each meeting that anyone who shows up feels that it wasn't just a class they took, but a cooperation um, that they took part in and were able to, to leave having said something that was communicable. Um, so yeah, full stop there. So do we do we think the first sort of the first thing that this committee should do is is structure a meeting where we're informing the public of, you know, where where are we? What's the timeline? What is this new committee that exists? That's a town committee. You know, what are the expectations? I mean, does that make sense as a first step? I think so. And I think it had been mentioned before, maybe it was you, Alex. Can't even say. <laughs> maybe it was you who had said that, you know, it could be a nice idea to have something set up. We're getting into spring, uh, maybe where there's even a chance to and you know engage at different tables, knowing some of, of the programs where people can, you know, just be reintroduced and you know, excited, ask what questions they have. And, um, you know, so if, if this was something that's in person, whether it's, you know, set up where people can make comments there, um, you know, sending comments and, and suggestions. So maybe, you know, something like that could, could be interactive where people are not only able to engage with, you know, uh, with us, with with other folks in the library, but also with just community in general, and bounce ideas off each other. So, does it make sense that a first meeting would be, um, you know, the lecture portion, as Alex calls it, is the here here are the new town committees that exist. Here's their role and function. Um, but then also have maybe some ability for people to start weighing in about priorities around values or what they hope, in, like have each of the building programs like ESL, teens, et cetera, and have people be able to somehow have some sort of interactive relative to that and start giving feedback or what, what, what do people envision? Yeah, I love I love the idea of having different tables and spaces for people to interact with each other at whatever level they are. I mean, just in our first two meetings, um, I think like we've already raised some really big questions that we could use input on, right? Values being one of them. Um, on a different level, what goes in these individual spaces, right? Uh, and then also, um, you know, given given the results of the survey and who took it, 
who are we missing? Whose voices do we still need to hear from? And I think by putting that back out into the community and uh, we share a sense of ownership so that like if my family showed up, I might send my kids to go draw what they wanna see in the kids space on um, you know, blank pieces of paper that have uh, an outline on them. Um, the, whereas I might wanna go to the, who else do we need to take a survey? You know, and like pitch those questions back to people. Um, after, like you said, a brief lecture on who we are. And is that, oh, go ahead, Austin. No, go ahead, I'll finish your question. No, I was just gonna ask, I was just fleshing out more details, but you're, it sounds like you're gonna give some, so. so I was gonna I, ask like, is it the whole JLBC that's there? Like, I think we ought to have a meeting um, as early as it can be arranged. I think the meeting that we ought to have or to focus almost entirely on an introduction of who we are, uh, the we being the building committee and an overview of the process. Who's the OPM? Who's the architect? Um, I think that it would be important not to get people in the first meeting drawing their visions of rooms. The reason being, I think we need to talk with the architects uh, about the process that they've used elsewhere and what's going to be most helpful in terms of their architectural work. I also think it'd be really important to try to engage people in a kind of snowball with us, which is uh, help us think about the outreach process, how to reach the various communities that they will come from. So I, I, I just, I worry that the first meeting, which I think should be really kind of introductory process oriented, you know, encouraging people to be involved as the process unfolds, talking about how the process will unfold, um, rather than in that first meeting, jumping into, you know, think about the way you want these rooms to be worked up before we've had a conversation with the, um, with the architects about where they are in the revision of the schematic designs. So that would be my, that would be my sense of things. The other thing is I think that um, our outreach effort has to be for everybody in the community, though it'll have to take different forms for different communities because so much has changed as you all have pointed out um, that the people, the 900 people that took the survey or whatever, we wanna hear from them as well as we um, move this process forward, though the outreach efforts may have to be different to different uh, communities uh, in order to reach everybody equitably. So I would just hold back myself from the getting into, you know, imagine what you would like to see in the library in this first meeting. Thanks, Austin. Nika? You guys are like really tentative with your hand rising. I just feel like I have to work on my game. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I I do agree. Uh, I think that, you know, I mean, even if we look at um, the school building committee, I think they're doing a great job. I mean, what we're in essence talking about is a is a forum, um, you know, to start. And I and I do agree with that. Like, as you know, people an overview, and again, just you know, reiterating what we do know. Um, where are the potentials for in involvement and community input? And um, I think that that makes sense, but, um, and I do think, and I don't want us to think like when we're saying target audience that we're just specifically talking about any one group of people. You know, we are talking about just in, in general, um, yes, that would include an audience that we don't have, um, but that could very well also include an audience that we don't have that are due would have been the same exact audience you would have had during these first surveys. You know, so it's just out there, but I, I do think that also going forward, it would be um, important for us to at least try if possible to have something where we can 
engage in, in person and people could actually come and interact and you know see tables i think that's off, often one of the downfalls of outreach when you're not actually like going to people making sure that you know you're getting out there and going to places where you know some of the audience that you do want to attract that you do not have access to are you know so that also speaks to um austin's point the more people we involve the more organizations that and you know uh, committees whomever it is that we involve uh, invite to this initial forum if you will will be helpful and then we can you know together be able to move towards like ha having them because it would be important to have like on top of if we did something was in person on top of um, tables so the programs that are within the library have you know committees that would be you know relevant to help bring community there as well you know because they're going to bring along their own um, audiences and even just in terms of um, advertising or promoting whatever meeting and events that we're doing we'll have you know we'll have all of that going in at once so that will just gain us a you know naturally a wider, a wider audience Um, I, I have, I have mixed feelings, Austin. I, I, um, I think I, I keep, I keep seeing sort of, um, public comment in two buckets and one gets into, you know, what is, what do the interior finishes look like? What is the exterior finishes look like? Um, but then one is, what do you want the feel of the space to be and what do you want to see in that space? And to me, I mean, I, I guess I feel like the sooner we can be engaging the public about what, what's going to be in those spaces in terms of, you know, what do teenagers want to see in their teen program? I think the sooner we have that conversation, the better, because if we're identifying you know, if we're identifying things that are important to teens now that the architect needs to be considering, um, then I think the earlier we're having that conversation, the better. But also I think it gets people, I'd be way more excited about coming to a meeting <laughs> where I could talk about what I wanted to see, you know, uh, in the teen space than I probably would be about learning who the JLBC is, but that's just me. So I don't know if there's some way to have a little bit of both in there. I mean, but again, that's just me. I mean, Anik and Alex, you guys weigh in. That's just Austin and I. We often, we don't always agree. Go ahead, Anika. Well, I think that like- you know, I mean, Austin, I still have different ideas. I think that feelings and specifics are different. I mean, you can always like, a feel has nothing to do with dictating what is possible necessarily. So if you open up, um, you open up for people to say, this is what I like to feel is the vibe, if you will, that, you know, I want, especially with youth. I mean, they can still participate and see these things. And these are um, ideas that I would imagine could be taking on to architects and how that, you know, because the, these are our are, are, are feels and, and they're more about atmosphere than necessarily um, the size of the room, the shape of a room, where it is, or building something that's that's not. So I, I, I do think that it's possible to open the floor um, for that, which would, yeah, that would make it more uh, exciting for people to come to, you know, and be able to share and we can compile those. So I think it's just a matter of like how, how it is communicated so it's clear. Okay. So I've heard Austin saying meeting as soon as possible. I've heard Anika saying in person would be good. I think it would be a meeting of the whole Jones Library Building Committee. So we would recommend this at our next committee. Just trying to have some actionable steps for what would be next. Yeah, I mean, I could imagine. Um... To be transparent, like I'm not a big uh, 
I keep showing up to a movement because of the personalities. That being said, some of my longest relationships have come from movement building. So like, who knows, maybe I'm not as self-aware as I want to be. Um, the That being said, I think like for those people who are going to be attracted to the project by knowing the players more, um, it might make sense to have an area you know, to do the, this is who we are, this is who the, um, or this is what the project is, sort of speech to the group. And then also very clearly announce like, and we have workstations around the room. And one of them is that you can go meet the rest of the Jones Library Committee, right? And we wanna make sure that there's a space for people to have that. Um, for folks who are interested in dealing with this other question, there's a flip chart over there for those who want to deal with this other, and you don't need to stay in the same space, right? And I think that also will be a really good benchmark for us going forwards to see where we have engagement and where we don't. Um, so we can figure out how, where do we need to start asking people to get involved um, or looking to, to cultivate interest, if that makes sense. Because these questions aren't going away. Like we can't, we can't get to the finish line and not have clear values, but everyone really knows who the five of us are and call it a success. <laughs> At least I hope so, not. Yeah. So how, how do we um, want to advertise for this? And are we leaning toward in person? And uh, where would just be a matter of between me working with folks in the town and the library director figuring out what a venue might possibly be. Could you, could this happen either, well, I hate to say things that are always like outdoors because you never know about weather, but you know, what about, you know, at the library, you know, um, whether it's in, in the front side, the tent. You know, there's like, yeah, there's space to, the, to spread out. Um, you know, you can have, you know, depending on how the stations are, if you, you know, there, I think there's, there's opportunity to collect, you know, thoughts, questions, ideas, and along with giving information, you know, at every space and that that's if it's in person. And if it is, you know, if it's, if it's virtual, I mean, thank goodness, we've moved along with Zoom. So I think there are ways that to do something where it's a still exciting and and engaging and you can give information but I think ideally you know it might be nice to have something in person there's also the, the flip side of you know um, the audience could be smaller so maybe maybe there would have to be two you know or two options or um, you know two meetings scheduled so if one's online then one is in person starting online even. And what do people have in terms of thoughts about day of the week, time of day? Maybe weekend day to accommodate more people. We weekend day, you said? I would, I would think because it's it's always hard. I mean, I'm, I'm so, I mean, I, I'm just looking at, uh, Traditionally, I think this is a big Monday through Friday, like eight to four community. You know, I'm a polar opposite, you know, I have no regular schedules, but um, I, I think that even if we look at that, we would want to be able to make sure that we have as much participation as possible. So I would probably say like, you no know, mid mornings or afternoon. So that would leave kind of weekdays to evenings, which is also inconvenient. Um, but if we did a weekend day that also, and if, you know, there's something you know, for kids as well, or whenever it happens, that will allow people to bring their children, which you would want to happen. You know, there may be more flexibility if we can do this on a Saturday or even a, even a Sunday. And I, I don't know how quickly something like this pulls together, having never tried to pull something together. I don't know whether, like, I mean, Austin, when you're saying as soon as possible, you probably have a better sense for what what is as soon as possible. And I'm thinking April break, for schools is I think the third week of April. That's also, I believe, uh, the first farmer's market, which is something potentially interesting to glom onto that might get more 
people. Um, so I don't know what timing wise you were thinking, Austin, when you say, yeah, okay. I think whenever we can, whenever you can pull it off, I mean, uh, when it makes sense uh, to do it. I, I just, uh, the way I've been thinking about this is I just think that the outreach effort ought to start right away before, you know, we're going to have to do a lot of design work and a lot of that. Let's get out there and begin to talk to the community. And what we, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time talking about how to talk to the community. Let's get talking to the community. So that's, that's kind of whenever that is, whenever it can work out. The other question, Alex um, and Anika and Xander may, may know, uh, uh, we might want to look at what the schools are doing or have done and try to benefit from their experience, what has worked, what, what do they think might work, so that we're, we're, we're kind of learning from an effort that's um, also underway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think part of that is that the MSBA requirements relative to the OPM are much different than they are for the MBLC. And so I think there's a certain element of community outreach and design website, designing of websites, et cetera, that is mandated upon the OPM that's not um, in the same way. That's my understanding. Doesn't mean we can't do it. It's just may not necessarily be in the costing that we have from our OPM because it would be atypical the extent to which it is for the MSBA is my understanding, but I can double check. Yeah. So I forget when spring break is because uh, I'm evidently a bad parent and employee of ARP. So yay, two birds, one stone. Um, but I think it would make sense for you to do three weeks. Um, and like the reason why is just one week to put together materials. So article or you know, some sort of announcement for newspapers, print, et cetera, um, some sort of flyer to get out to businesses um, and one week to actually get those out to said places, um, including uh, all of the schools, right? Um, I would wanna team up with ARPS to see how do we, how can this be in every principal update, uh, PGO, you know, kids backpack. Um, and then, so use that first week to set all that up, second week to execute that um, and ask people to RSVP if interested and include a phone number or email so that in that third week we can set out reminders. Um, see you this weekend, looking really forward and that might also be a good place to start doing some of the introductions, hearing uh, interactions, et cetera. Um, so that coming into Saturday, it's not the first time we've heard from folks, but in the actual reservation or not reservation, but in the actual reminder, you know, if you have any questions you want us to address, make sure to shoot us an email before Sunday. We'll see you there. Thanks, right. Alex. April 15th through April 24th. Right. And then also like keeping in mind, there's a lot, there's a quite a bit of planning going on for different events that will be coming up um, around the summer that are also, you know, partnered with the, you know, the school system and all that. So it's like also, you know, going forward to, you know, keep relevant, um, keep engaged, um, you know, have presence at, you know, some of these different um, events, things like that to just, Keep it going, because again, this is the start creating buzz. I absolutely agree with the three weeks, and I think it would be important to have and a save the date, maybe out as soon as possible, so people can can see. Because I think there are a lot of community members that are waiting, you know, just waiting to know, okay, when when are we going to engage, you know. Okay. Um, along that sort of same vein, um, in the last meeting, uh, Alex, you had asked if we could have the folks from the library who are involved in the community partnerships attend one of our meetings. And um, so those two people are um, Janet Ryan, who's our head of 
programming and outreach, and then Mia Cabana, who's our head of youth services. Um, and they both are super on board and totally not available Tuesdays at four o'clock, <laughs> either one of them. Um, but they um, are putting together um, a list that we'll have for our next meeting of sort of the partnerships that the library has. And we have, we have sort of partnerships that we're constantly working with, and then we have ones that turn off to be one-off situations, but maybe this is a good chance for us to develop them even further. And so I'll have that for our next meeting so that we can maybe springboard on those partnerships as ways to get the word out for these meetings um, as well. And then they both are, uh, you know, want us to keep them in the loop in terms of, you know, the library getting the word out that they'll use all their various and sundry methodologies as well, so. So one of the things that is just familiar to me, and I, I don't like this language, so I apologize in advance, familiar to my organizing background, is the idea of um, testing relationships um, with very simple tasks. And so uh, it, it takes some of the guesswork out of like, like you said, some of these relationships are really vibrant and ongoing, and some of these are one-offs. Um, I'm curious if we uh, if we ask for them to go back to all of these community partners and open the Rolodex and get uh, a flyer out to everyone or to invite them to participate in this, it might be a really good barometer of how vibrant those relationships currently are or are not based on who shows up. Good point. Okay. Um, okay. So I guess I, there's, sorry, I'm struggling with the fact that there's no like staff person here. There's no, I'm sort of trying to figure out what the role of chair is and who's executing these things because we don't have the library director as part of this as we normally would. And so I'm um, sort of struggling with how things move forward. In Austin, you have a look that tells you you have an idea. So if if you know, okay, <laughs> you can. I so I'm just sort of trying to figure out like, okay, so if we have some ideas. I mean, one of the things I think that you know um, Anika talked about last time is an inventory of available tools for communication. So you know, I don't know whether. I don't know how that happens. I don't know whether we divide and conquer. I don't know whether I go and ask that of somebody. I'm trying to sort of figure out how do we move whatever we decide in this group into action like i think we have a lot of people who makes the magic happen <laughs> i think that we have a, a lot of people ready and waiting i think that again with a a save the date i think we have no shortage of folks who we can send this to who can spread the word to i mean even even just central you have library you have a town and you have different organizations and just you know ask them you know can we post this but I think it would be a matter of you know again getting getting a little something a flyer save the date and then having you know an email to ask with it and sending that at once um to you know all the stakeholders that we want to send it to um for so and who creates that document, who approves that document, who sends that document? Like, these are the things I don't quite know how that's happening and who's directing it. It's what I'm trying to sort of get my arms around. I'm just assuming it's us here. So even if we have to say, okay, if we had to do this and it was just us in the room, you know, um, you know, who, who can get a flyer together? Like, I'm, I'm willing to get a, a flyer together for people to look at if there's no one else. Um, but I think that, you know, again, we also have, you know, we have folks that we have, um, you know, Jennifer Moist, and we also have, I'm sorry, why do I always like, what do we have? Then we could also ask Brianna at the town hall. This is, she does these types of things. So I think that we need to look at this as not necessarily like reinventing the wheel, but just what wheels do we want? You know, what wheels do we want to put on it? And the, then the, the people are there um, and, you know, just ask them and, um, you know, because if you think about it, they, especially the people that they do this all the time, right? So they're, 
people who are always um, organizing, you know, especially around outreach and, and flyers and, and getting that out. We can also help because we'll have broader networks, you know, and, you know, we can talk to others and make sure and just even, you know, amongst our, ourselves. I said, there's a lot of, um, you know, events that are being planned. So I know you'll have some of us that are already working with different organizations and different capacities. And so, you know, whether we did a check-in, we could have a list in this week, just making sure that we're aware of all the organizations to reach out to, make sure we haven't left anyone out. I'll look at that and just, okay, did, you know, have, have we left someone and start to communicate. But I think that if we're talking about three weeks, um, that should be, you know, that, that would need to be a priority because we would want this information, whatever it is, to get out fairly soon as a save the date. Okay, so are you, do, are you offering to reach out to Brianna? Do you want me to reach out to Brianna? What's- I'm happy to, yeah. Okay, I don't wanna put more on you. I know you already have a lot on your plate, so I wanna be cognizant of that. Um, I can- I I'll I'll check on uh, availability of the library tent because I know it does I know it's going up soon um, uh, and I know it gets booked by programming so I'll find an available date for that and then I'll circle back with the community partners for that piece um, okay okay. Um, and then hopefully, I don't know, we have a different lead for our OPM. So uh, I don't know whether we want to set our next meeting or whether we want to wait to find out what that person's availability to give us, whether they're just going to send us the list. I just want to make sure that didn't get dropped in terms of that sort of structure of process from the OPM. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of weirdness hearing you. No, it's okay. I start too long when I say anything. I, I'm just trying to figure out for our next meeting. Um, do we just want to set a meeting for two weeks? Do we want to? Uh, yes. Great. Thank you, Alex, for. Thank you. So let's see. Two weeks from today is April 5th. Does that work for folks? April 5th at four? That's for okay. Alex. Yeah. If you said April 5th at 4 p.m.? Yeah, I believe that's Tuesday, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just putting it in, so. So we do have a couple members um, uh, in the uh, audience. Um, so we do have a public comment if anyone uh, who is in the public would like to share a comment, thought, question, we would welcome it. Raise your hand, be happy to hear from you. Okay, nothing from the audience. Thank you for attending. <laughs> Appreciate everybody in the audience who's attending. Um, okay, I think, is there anything um, that I didn't speak to, ask, talk about that someone would like to speak to, talk, ask about? I think the biggest thing that I actually used to head on here was Austin's comment from the last meeting about, um, what it means for this committee to make recommendations, what that piece of our charge means. I think at some point, preferably before we have this meeting with the community, we need to come up with some kind of agreement of whether we're collating public comments and passing them along, whether we're making some kind of recommendation, what, what exactly does that piece of the charge mean? If people, yep, Austin. So not on this question, Alex, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, something else I think that we might consider doing, and here you could reach out to the library director if you think it's a good idea. Um, <clears throat> many communities, as you very well know, in Western Massachusetts have recently renovated their libraries. And I wonder whether we could benefit from finding out what kind of community outreach was done, what they thought worked, what they thought didn't work, and there, if you think it's you think that information might be of value, you might uh, ask Sharon whether she could solicit such information over the kind of a library director's list server or something like that. Yep. Thanks.
Okay, so we'll table the conversation about <laughs> what recommendation means for another day. Um, I mean, ahead, I Kat. guess one of the things I I want to maybe not to dodge the question, but at the next Jones Library Committee uh, meeting is like asking them, what do you expect? Like, what do you expect from us, right? Um, maybe not in that tone, uh, but just that way we have an idea of what the charge, you know, I'm assuming they're the ones who set the charge. So like, let's get some clarification from them and then figure out how we make that work for us. I think that's an excellent plan, Alex. Thank you. I like it. Good. All right. Unless somebody has uh, anything else. Oh, I just wanted to ask uh, last library committee, someone mentioned that something had happened with the OPM. And so we had a new project manager. Can someone fill me in on that? Austin, do you know more about that than me? I mean, I just know that we have a new project manager. It's still Collier's. Uh, um, the Collier's shifted the staff person. Uh, there were some communications issues, uh, which I was not involved with, uh, between, I think, uh, the library director and the staff person. And the question was just about rapidity of response. And, uh, and in any case, uh, when that was raised with Collier's, they decided to switch. The, the person who would be our representative. That's that's what I that's what I know and that's what I believe happened. Which I mean the person who, you know, our former person had was it had recently become our our staff person. So it's not like we lost somebody who we've been working with for years. Colliers we've been working with at the beginning, but not this particular person. So um, yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Everybody, appreciate everything, and uh, we will see you in two weeks or whenever our next JLBC meeting is. So, thank uh, you. Thanks, that, Alex. All the meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>